Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the 2024 presidential election and just talking a little bit about the polling we've been getting for the Biden versus Trump matchup. So um, in case you haven't really been following the polls, which I don't blame you because we're a year out, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, most polls actually have Donald Trump winning and by a good amount. Um, Morning Consult came out a few days ago. They had Trump up by three. Harris X has him up by six. Uh, he's up or uh, yeah, he's up by 12 in the other Harris X poll. But I think that one's a bit I, I would buy into that one a bit less. And then uh, Morning Consult had them tied at the beginning or in the middle of the month. Uh, Reuters had Trump up by two. And then when you push undecided, he's still up by two. And so most polls do actually have Donald Trump winning by a good amount. And so um, typically, or at least in 2016 and 2020, if we were to see these polls, we would have been like, OK, well, the election's over because the polls have twice underestimated Donald Trump. And in 2020, in 49 of 50 states, Trump actually outperformed his 538 average. The only state he didn't was Colorado. And so um, clearly Donald Trump in the polls, usually usually Trump will do better. And in 2020, if you watch my channel all the way back then, uh, which I hope you didn't because the videos were not – I mean they're, they're still probably not that good quality because I don't script them. I just talk into a microphone and yap for a little bit. But they were even worse than they are now. Um, but in 2020, I was saying, you know, look, uh, Biden's up by this much nationwide. I don't believe that. He's not up by 17 Wisconsin. He's not going to win you know, Texas by three. He's not up by seven Florida. And so I obviously at that time was like – you know, Trump's going to do better than the polls think. And I think a lot of people, after they were wrong in 2020, because a lot of people just believe the polls in 2020, or they, you know, predicted Trump would win or whatever, they were wrong. And they were like, okay, so the polls are just always going to underestimate uh, Donald Trump by this amount, X, Y amount. And so the problem with that is that there's no mathematical formula to this, because polls aren't constant, right? Like, a lot of people who like math, I don't love math, so maybe that's why I don't do this, um, but uh, the problem with a lot of the people who like to make rules for elections in this day and age, there's not, like, a real rule you can prove. Like, there's no equation you can make that will give you, like, you know, x squared plus, like, y or whatever, right? Like, you're, you're never going to get a formula that will tell you exactly what the relationship is between the actual vote share Trump's going to get and what the polls say. Like, you can't plug in, what you know, the poll value and then get a result. And a lot of people think you can do that. So they're like, okay, well, in the state of Florida in 2020, Biden was up by three in the polls. He lost it by three. So that's a 6% margin we have to add to Trump whenever we see a Florida poll. So if he's up by 12 in this poll, he's actually up by 18 in reality, right? And that doesn't really make any sense because um, Trump might win Florida by 12. I don't think he'll win it by that much, but he might. He won't win it by 18. I can promise you that. And so um, that you, you have to have kind of a – like inability to just think about the, the things you're saying like electorally. And think, is this plausible? Do I actually think this is going to happen? Or have I done the equation wrong? Because usually you've done the equation wrong. Usually your gut and your brain are going to be better than a mathematical formula that, spoiler alert, cannot work because there's no constant within the relationship between polling and um, uh, actual election results. We can make guesses, which will, you know, that's what we'll be doing today, but there's no constant. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. So let's talk about it. Um, Trump's up in all these polls. A lot of people think it, he's had, you know, serious momentum nationwide. A lot of people really are starting to think he's favored. And, I, you know, you can make an argument for that. I wouldn't actually be opposed to that idea. I think Trump actually could win. And I've been saying this. I, I don't want to toot my own, uh, yeah, I don't want to toot my own horn all video because I kind of did that at the beginning with the 2020 stuff. But I was saying for a while that Trump always had like a 30 to 40% chance of winning. And I might have underestimated, he might be at, if he were held tomorrow, he might actually win. Um, but I think these polls aren't surprising when you look at the cross tabs. The one that CNN did on the day of the election, let's see, where was it? It was November 8th or 7th, whichever one it was. It wasn't Quinnipiac. Well, let's see. It, it came out on the 8th. So let's see. Was it, was a morning consult? I'm not sure, but, uh, there's a CNN poll that came out and it had Trump up by like 5%. It was like 54 or it was 50 to 45, I think. Don't quote me on that, though. But, you know, bottom line was Trump was up by five. And I saw that when I was watching the – because this is the night of the Kentucky and the Mississippi and the Pennsylvania elections. And I was watching CNN for a little bit, and I saw that. And I was like, okay, so that's not good for Biden. And then uh, I think it was – no, it wasn't Chris Chaliza. It was 
uh, it, it, it was someone else. It, it was another one of their election commentators. Um, it wasn't John King, though, but it was one of those guys. And he says, yeah, this poll actually found Donald Trump beating Joe Biden with um, uh, black men. And so I and I, the, second, the second I heard that, I was like, OK, so this poll doesn't make any sense because it, it, it again, go to 2020 exit polls. Uh, look at how black males voted in 2020. Uh, let's see if we can find gender and race because uh, I haven't pulled this up and I it, now my lack of preparedness is really really coming in uh, here I think I just scrolled past it um but gender and right here we go yeah black men voted for Biden by 50 points in 2020 and I don't you know maybe there's a shift towards Trump I don't think it's gonna be by more than 50 points I don't think Trump's gonna win black men and so that's the problem that these polls have is you know they'll give you a result they'll say Trump's up by seven percent nationwide and then you'll see that He's winning black men by 50, or he's ahead with uh, Hispanic voters by, or he's winning black men, or he's ahead by 20 points of Hispanic voters. And those are margins that I don't believe, and that I would bet my, uh, you know, bet the House that they aren't going to happen. And so that's the first kind of way to check polls, right, is looking at the crosstabs, looking at what they're saying, because a poll will say a lot of things, but in, you know, the most important of which is the top line, which is, you know, Biden 47, Trump 51, but it'll say, this is how black voters are voting. This is how Hispanic voters are voting. This is how white voters are voting. This is how women are voting. This is how men are, are voting. This is how young people are voting, how middle-aged people are voting, educated vo people are voting, people without college degrees, urban areas, suburban areas, rural areas. Like, they'll give you a lot of information. I think a lot of people just don't realize that. And so you read them, and you're like, okay, this doesn't make any sense. Because, again, unless you are a believer in a 50-point swing with black men towards Donald Trump, then the poll doesn't really it doesn't hold a lot of stock. So yeah, Biden it is bad that he's down by five percent in a CNN poll. That's like really not good for him. And the fact that he's down in all these polls that shows it's it's a common trend here. But I'm not if 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 I'm a Democrat and I'm looking at these polls, sure I'm concerned, but I'm not going to be concerned by a poll that has Biden you know yielding all these ridiculous results. So that's my first point. My second point is just to look at more recent data we have because look we can talk about 2020, talk about 2016 where the polls underestimated Trump. But in 2022, the polls underestimated Democrats broadly. And in 2023, Democrats did pretty well, especially in special elections. Uh, they've outperformed in, I think, every House election since, uh, I think with one exception, since um, the Dobbs decision. And if you look at the November elections, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Kentucky, Democrats win by five. They come within, you know, I want to say 3.3% of winning Mississippi, which is insane, which I want to talk more about at some point. I want to write about it, but I don't have the time. Um, and they win the Supreme Court race in Pennsylvania by, I think, a, a six or seven points. They win the Virginia legislature back, and they win both referendums in Ohio. So the only race Republicans like really won that was <coughs> statewide or high profile was Mississippi, and they won it by 13% less than Trump won it by in 2020. So that's not great. And then furthermore, when you look at how polls are suggesting Democrats are doing down ballot, they're winning in, you know, Sherrod Brown's ahead most of the Senate polls. Um, Democrats, you know, I haven't looked at the governor polls or any of the other Senate polls, but I, I think Jackie Rosen led in the most recent poll in Nevada. You know, they're spread few and far between because we're so far away from the election. But the bottom line is, right, like uh, there are a lot of really, really um, good polls things for Democrats right now. And the only thing that isn't good for them are the polls that have Biden, you know, losing black men or that have Donald Trump uh, winning Hispanic voters by 25 points. And so for me, I don't really took, put too much stock into polls, especially this far away from an election, which brings me into my next point. Election, you know, the election's a year from now. In 2020, in, on this day, November, what is it, the 22nd, 2021, Everyone thought Republicans were going to get a red wave in the House. In November 2019, I don't know about everyone else, it was kind of a, you know, there was no consensus, and I wasn't on YouTube back then, but I thought Trump was going to win the election in November 2019 because COVID hadn't happened. And in 2021, I thought Republicans would win the House elections because the Dobbs decision hadn't happened. Or I, I, I still thought they were going to win the House elections, but I thought they were going to win the Senate because the Dobbs decision hadn't happened. And now right now, you know, some of us think Biden's going to win. Some of us think Trump's going to win. That's great. But here's the thing, where you're from the election, there's a whole 350-something days, I think maybe 340-something days, 
So something big to happen. They could help Biden, could help Trump. But here's the like, but this is the point I'm making. We don't know so much that it's just really hard to make any sweep generalizations right now. If the election were held tomorrow, I think Biden would be in pretty serious trouble. But it's not. And so the only if, if the only thing we're judging or making predictions off of are these polls, which are bad, I think we're doing it wrong. So here's what I'm gonna say. Like, here's my take, right? Like I've been saying this, this, this. You know, I'm, I've kind of been criticizing a lot of the takes people have been having. And uh, by the way, um, if you read the polls, I don't blame you because polls are interesting and they're fun to look at if you like elections. Um, but and I, I don't mean to be critical in any way, but I think it's too early. Polls don't really have predictive insight this far out from an election. Uh, in 2011, I think I think Obama was down in most of the pre in the uh, polls to Romney nationwide. Um, I think. Hillary was up by like 19 points over Trump in the few polls we had in the fall of 2015. So just broadly speaking, polls don't have a ton of predictive insight a year out from an election. And so I would encourage you to not read them too much. Now, obviously, I'm a hypocrite because I read the CNN poll and I was like, okay, this is weird. But I don't put too much stock into them. And I really don't think you should either. So that's kind of my point for this video. I think Biden is in trouble, but I, I, I think it isn't because of the polls. The only thing the polls are picking up on right now that I think is very right is the age problem because Biden is – he turned what? Yeah, he turned 81. Yeah, he turned 81 today. So, um, you know, he's old. He's a really old president, and I, I think that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. So we're going to have to, I think, talk a little bit about that. I think that's going to be his easily the biggest issue he faces as he runs for re-election. I, I don't, and I want to see how Democrats deal with it because it's a pretty uh, – problematic thing for them at least if you believe a lot of the surveys and you know polls here we go again um but i think that's a legitimate problem that's been a legitimate problem for years now so uh we'll talk about that i want to talk mississippi i want to talk a little bit more about the 2024 election in a biden versus trump context but today i just want to talk about the polls and why i think that you shouldn't like regardless of what you think about biden regardless of what you think about trump regardless of what you think about the election results i don't think you should put too much stock into polls right now so Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I'll see you all in the next one.